Science and engineering are two of the most impactful fields of study in the world today. I'm going to explain that to you guys in this video. We're going to define what science and engineering are, and then after that I'm going to challenge you guys with some situations where you kind of have to identify, is that science or is that engineering? So here we go. Science is a way of learning about the natural world that is based on evidence and logic. There's your definition, guys. Science is a way of learning about the natural world that is based on evidence and logic. Essentially, science tries to explain how everything works. We run experiments to figure out how things work. And my wife jokes with me because she says that when we go home for Christmas, um, that my family only talks about two things, how things work and animals. <laughs> and I'm like, I chuckle, but it's true. I and mean, everything that we talk about around the farm is always about how things work in animals. And uh, I thought about that, and the, the reason that we talk about science so much at home is because we have to. As farmers, you as a farmer, you have to know how your crops work. You have to know how they grow. You have to know how much fertilizer to put on them. You have to know, um, you know, how to keep your animals healthy and how they behave. I mean, there's so many different things that you have to know how they work in order to be a successful farmer. Because if you don't, you're just not going to be a successful farmer. Your cattle are going to die and your crops are going to die, <laughs> you know? So we are in the business of knowing science when it comes to farming. But farming isn't everything. I mean, that's just sort of like one field of study, I suppose, in agriculture. But there are many other fields of science as well, such as astronomy and meteorology and genetics and... Um, pyrotechnics. You know, there's tons of different fields of science where we can look at different phenomena around the world. Even geology, looking at volcanoes and earthquakes and oceanography and the oceans. There's just so many beautiful things in, um, in creation that we can take a look at. And so let's take, for example, tornadoes. A couple hundred years ago, we didn't know a whole lot about tornadoes. The science in the field of tornadoes was fairly limited compared to what it is today. I mean, today you can turn on the TV during a storm and you can know exactly where the tornado probably is. The meteorologist can tell you how far away it is from your home and you can prepare for it. He can even tell you maybe the possible strength. He can tell you when it's touched down. And a couple hundred years ago, that just was not possible. You know, so we have learned, science has allowed us to learn so much more about tornadoes than we, than we knew before. The same thing goes with genetics. The field of genetics is growing um, tremendously right now, and we don't know a ton yet. I mean, the, the field is growing, but hopefully, eventually, um, knowing more about DNA and about our genes will allow us to sort of predict if we have a uh, potential to get certain diseases and such. I know we can do some of that already, but that field is definitely growing, and knowing more about it is going to help us in the long run. And then let's take uh, combustion, for example. How could combustion help us? I mean, mixing a couple things together or doing this to make an explosion, how is that helpful? Well, explosions are helpful sometimes. Of course, they're bad when used in war and sometimes and whatnot. But, you know, I mean, you can use explosions in mining and all kinds of other things that are helpful too. But um, knowing how that works is important. And then engineering is a kind of a different field. It's related to science, but it's different in nature. So, for example, engineering, by definition, is fulfilling human needs and defining problems. It's all about designing solutions to problems. So engineering is fulfilling human needs and defining problems. It's designing solutions to problems. And a few examples here, and again, I'm just scratching the surface, but look at um, cars. When cars were first created they didn't really have a whole lot of safety in mind, okay? There were no airbags, there were no seatbelts. It was just you in a metal box with a big engine on it. In fact, I think a lot of the steering wheels were probably made out of metal starting out. And so can you imagine getting in an accident like 40 miles an hour and just running into a steel steering wheel? Ugh, it's just awful, you know? And so a human need arose very quickly for safety mechanisms within cars. And so engineers had to design different safety mechanisms, and some work, some didn't, but now we have seatbelts, now we have airbags, now we have all these different, I mean, today, like now we're getting into different sensors that'll, that like tell us if someone's in our, our blind spot, or they show us like what our car is doing, like they have a camera in the back of the car. There's just so many different things that engineers are making for us to fulfill that human need of safety. 
Um, another need that is definitely pertinent within the Dallas area is traffic. Uh, we need smooth and traffic. There are so many cars in this city um, because we don't have a whole lot of mass transportation. Engineers have to solve that problem by building more roads and more bridges. And so they get to design and solve that problem. There's another problem that is the, the need of the need for more silicon, um, silicon computer wafers, that is, or computer um, silicon wafers that are used for computer chips. So I've got a picture of one right here. And uh, to engineer these things, to make these things, is a, it's a process, a chemical process. And engineers, chemical engineers, try to figure out ways to make that happen faster because the need for silicon wafers is huge. I mean, so many electronic devices are being made these days that it's uh, super important that we can make it as quickly and efficiently as possible. So that might be another engineering challenge somebody might do. But that's science and engineering. Science is all about figuring out um, how everything works, and engineering is about fulfilling human needs and defining problems. Two of the most influential people in science and engineering were Albert Einstein and Thomas Edison, perfect examples. Albert Einstein asked a lot of questions about how the world worked, and those questions led to more questions and more questions, and eventually led him to understanding or theories about how the world worked, one of which was this E equals MC squared. He developed that equation from asking a lot of questions. Thomas Edison, on the other hand, was more of an engineer. He invented a lot of different things that solved human problems and fulfilled human needs, one of which was the, the need for light. He invented the light bulb. And so after testing prototype after prototype after prototype, he was able to come up with this invention and fulfill the human need of light at the time.